And a lot of times, more than one is correct. And more than one is wrong. Many more than one. <laughs> but sometimes there's like three or four ways you could play the game to win. That's one of my favorite parts, is when you have a matchup where I played the matchup one way, like I... Let's say there's like a matchup where I've always played, like, I gotta try and get ahead on tempo, try and try and get ahead on te tempo. And then I don't realize for a really long time, wait a minute, if I actually assume the control route here, I could actually win in a different way. That happens a lot with things like Zoo or some of the more aggressive decks. Sometimes the best way to play an aggro deck against a really heavy control deck is to out-control the control deck and try and make sure that their resources don't get enough value instead of just zerging them down. That's always really cool when that happens. It doesn't happen a lot with some of the more traditional aggro decks. Like you look at Smork Rogue is way too smorky to ever pivot game plans. But previously, there's been a lot of cases where the correct way to beat Priest, especially no win condition priests or other decks that don't have a win condition, like no win condition warriors and stuff like that. There's been times in the metagame where it's been like, if you play out your stuff slowly enough, you can just outvalue their removal, actually. It's kind of cool. And you never think about that, because it's an aggro deck, so it's it's weird to think about trying to play the value game. But like, Face Hunter did that. That was kind of one of the cool things that Face Hunter could do. We have very expensive cards in our hand. Well, how do we play very expensive cards? We gain many mana points. Deathstalker Rexar. That was kind of a more forced approach to pivoting your game plan, but yeah. You could just play Deathstalker Rexar and then be a control deck. That was, that's not the face hunter period I was talking about, but it does apply still. It does make sense. Oh my god. He's gonna kill it. Tempting to try and heal it to make it live. To shadow hunter it. I have broom shadow hunter to pull something out later. Okay. There's no way this just lives. Penance Broom. Raise dead, eviscerate. Yeah, it's raise dead. Guess who's back? Back again. Zephyrs is back. Tell a friend. I think that's Freezing Tramp. What do the Rogue Secrets even do? Nothing. Cool, it wasn't plagiarized. It's dirty tricks, dirty tricks. Yeah, let's flare away these secrets. Get another Zephyrus. You don't pick the walks. You fell right into my trap. Your wish is my suggestion. Did not give me flare, but the shadow madness is good. Yeah, yeah, draw your two cards. I got another Zephyrus. I don't care about you. Alright, what is this, Zephyrus number four? <laughs> Fourth Zephyrus, Highlander deck. I don't know, we had the, we had the one Zephyrus, we brought it back, and then we picked it up, and then we brought it back, yeah. Four Zephyrus and nine cards. Five Zephyrus and nine cards, if we count our opponents. Our ZPM is off the charts. ZPC, Zephyrus per card. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't tell me he's picking it up too. Oh my god. There we go, the hero we need. Six Zephyrs this game so far. And that guy gets flicked a lot. Oh, 
We can use Zephyrs and Plague of Death to recover lots of tempos. We want to take this time to start gaining minions. Okay. Not exactly what I want. We can steal his Zephyrs if we use our Zephyrs. They need Plague of Death. So, so we have to use Plague of Death, then we can Zephyrs for Tyrion, then we can take his Zephyrs or something. Now, because these Zephyrs is our Tyrion. This could be really hard to use that for really well. Flare this. I don't know, two rogue secrets and a hunter secret, do we even care? Just gonna play this. See what happens. Cool. All right, there we go. He's back. Does he? He does he have another shadow step? He used the shadow step on this for some reason. Oh, there it is. Okay, we're keeping it going. All right, Zephyr's number seven. Paladin secrets. He upped its attack, so I couldn't steal it with Cabal Acolyte. He's got Shadow Clone or Shenanigans up. Shadow Clone's the one where if you attack his face, he gets a copy of that minion with stealth, right? So we could give him something and then take it. Oh my god, that's some value. Mr. Python's ready to grind, dude. Holy smokes. How much is this worth to you? Mm. It's a hunter secret that could be snipe. Don't let the door hit you. In circus amalgam protects my guy on board, which is pretty good here. And I can wiggle in that hero power. Or I could cycle inner fire. I get just hero power. Ooh, that's a good one too. Big value cards. Very slow tempo card, the mind control, but amazing value. If he decides to go for a Tyrion at some point or something like that, it could be really useful. Decent ooze value. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then we can turn that to a one one. That's a decent card. But I don't think I can fit it in this turn. It's not very good with my current hand landscape, but it's a good card. Do I actually want to inner fire this? This trade and that dying is fine. If I inner fire it, we don't really eh it kills that, I guess guaranteed. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> oh, that's big here. We can take Leonk with Cabal Acolyte, potentially. That'd be really good if we could figure out a way to do that. There might be some way that we take the Leonk, but 
Uh, it seems like too much of a gamble. We can take so much damage in the bank swing here. Next turn, I think I want to just do like this, plus some spells and see what happens. And just do this this turn. When we're under less pressure, you know, do something that might not work. Instead of when we're under lots of pressure doing something that might not work. We got the clears, let's use them. Oh god. Does he just have burn follow up? Oh god. Looks like we have to Zephyr's heal. Eight mana mind control. That's pretty good. So we can mind render the Zephyrs from his hand, right? He still has Zephyrs plus the guy that gets secrets from Potion of Illusion. And then leave him with mind controls and clears. I never lie, but I'm of the, the secrets are coming back out. So I can like swap hands Zephyrs Flare. He has his Zephyrus, right? I'm not crazy. Say your thoughts with the class now. Yes. It better give me flare. <laughs> give me flare. There's five secrets. Thank you. Thank you. Oh no! Oh my young counters the flare! <laughs> Oh, that's bad for me. Overall, still probably fine. Come on, go faster, game. Please. I couldn't play him. I could have played so many things if the game didn't just break and lag and then make the cards really big and throw them in the top right corner of the screen. <laughs> no, we know the last secret, actually. We knew the last secret was Shadow Clone or Shenanigans. I just flared the hell out of that snake. So now he clears the board with my cards, but then at the end of the day, I have cards and he no longer has cards. So, I'm excited about that. If he doesn't AoE, then I AoE after he develops, and then we both have no cards, but he has 6 left and I have 11 left. So I win. We did it! We finally did an Elusha that wasn't game losing. It takes a few tries. It's a card that, like... If you haven't played it for a little while, it's easy to forget what to do with it. It's a weird one. So I'm gonna play Silence and kill everything. And then the game ends. Oh, I also can add cards to my deck for fatigue. Let's give him one of these. And now I draw two cards a turn, and he draws one card a turn, and I start with six, and he starts with zero. Let's see who wins. Job done. I Looks like I win. <laughs> that was a sick game, though. That was pretty hype. How many Zephyrs was that? That was the eight Zephyrs game? Eight Zephyrs played. I think I played six on mine, and he played two on his. When I handed it all the broom that turn, that would have been pretty good. And the turn with the 3 2 and an extra card in my hand instead of a 1 1? Sounds better. <laughs> I think you found a misplay. Now you're gaming, dude.